بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان ٹو ڈیز لیکچر وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دی افیکٹس آف لیشنز آف دی مڈ برین سو واٹ از دی کلینیکل اور اپلائڈ اسپیکٹ lesion of the midbrain result in various syndromes for example weber syndrome benedict syndrome Clark's syndrome, next perinite syndrome, night syndrome and north nagel syndrome and there are also other types which we'll discuss later on in the table now before discussing these syndromes uh, we must have some uh, basic knowledge gross anatomy of some muscles etc because in the midbrain uh, there are nuclei of oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerve and abdusal nerve is uh, nucleus is in the bones so because uh, these oculomotor nerve trochlear nerve abdusal nerve innervate the muscles of the eyeball so lesions of these nerves will affect the functions of the eyeball movements of the eyeball so we cannot understand the effects of lesions of uh, midbrain unless and until we know what are the different uh, muscles related to the eyeball what are their actions and what are their uh, nerve supply and what will be the uh, effects of lesion of these nerves so in, in today's lecture we will first talk about the um, muscles of the eyeball etc their nerve supply and their function so ocular muscles <coughs> muscles of the eyeball we divide into two main categories extraocular muscles of the eyeball and intraocular muscles of the eyeball extraocular muscles they are outside the eyeball and inserted to the sclera of the eyeball located in the orbit take origin in the orbit inserted to the sclera extraocular muscles now these extraocular muscles comprise of recti and obliques ر 
رکھتا ہے یا آپ فور ان نمبر سپیریئر ریکٹس اور ریکٹس سپیریئر انفیریئر ریکٹس اور ریکٹس انفیریئر لیٹرل ریکٹس اور ریکٹس ایکسٹرنس لیٹرل ریکٹس اور ریکٹس ایکسٹرنس اینڈ میڈیل ریکٹس also known as rectus internus these were the recti four recti then obliques to a number superior oblique muscle oblique is superior and inferior oblique <clears throat> or oblique is inferior then there are muscles which are embedded in the wall of eyeball they are classified as intraocular muscle and what are the intraocular muscles muscles embedded in the different parts of the wall of the eyeball ciliaris muscle it is in the ciliary body ciliaris muscle and aradal muscle muscle of the iris and muscle of the iris is divided into two parts constrictor pupillae constrictor pupillae muscle or sphincter pupillae muscle and the second one is dilator pupillae muscle these are the muscles of the eyeball extrinsic and intrinsic apart from this muscle of the upper eyelid upper eyelid there is orbiculus oculi muscle which is one of the muscle of facial expression and apart from the orbiculus oculi muscle Uh, there is another muscle in the upper eyelid known as the levator palpebris superioris muscle mm. 
levator palpebri superioris muscle. <coughs> this muscle is uh, in the upper eyelid. Uh, there is no counterpart of this muscle in the lower eyelid. But some believe there are few smooth muscle fibers uh, in the lower eyelid also. So levator palpebri superioris muscle. Now this muscle comprises of two parts, skeletal part and smooth part. Levator palpebri superioris muscle comprises of smooth part or involuntary part and voluntary part or skeletal. Two parts of the levator palpebri, one innervated by autonomic nervous system, that is the smooth and involuntary part of the levator palpebri superior muscle, the other is the skeletal voluntary part. So these are muscles of the uh, uh, eyeball, extrinsic and in intrinsic, and at the same time, um, because the Levator palpebri superioris muscle of the upper eyelid is also innervated by a kilometer nerve. Uh, so we include this muscle also. Suppose uh, this is a <coughs> section through the skull in the region of orbit. This is roof of the orbit. And we have optic foramen. This is the floor of the orbit. Now inside the orbit is the eyeball. transparent cornea, then sclera. Now it is a optic canal. Here there is a tendon, circular tendon, attached to the bones of the orbit around the optic canal and small part of the superior orbital fissure. A tendinous ring. Now I told you that the extra ocular muscles are two obliques and four recti. So the recti are superior rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus and medial rectus. So from this common tendinous ring rectus superior muscle arise which is inserted to the sclera of the eyeball. The muscle fibers converts into a tendon 
and the tendon is then inserted to the sclera of the eyeball. This is rectus superior muscle. Then again from the tendinous ring another muscle arises, rectus inferior, inserted to the lower aspect of the sclera of the eyeball. The muscle converts into a tendon which is inserted to the lower part of the sclera of the eyeball. This is rectus superior and this is rectus inferior. Then suppose this is lateral side, so this is rectus lateralis or lateral rectus. run flowers in attached to the lateral aspect of the sclera. Gradually converts into a tendon which is inserted to the sclera. This is lateral rectus or le rectus lateralis. Now on the medial side will be the medial rectus. Part of it is shown in this diagram. Also arises from this tendinous ring. This is medial rectus. So four recti arising from common tendinous ring and inserted to the uh, sclera of the eyeball as they run forward the diverge like a cone of muscles. Then there are two obliques, obliquus superior and obliquus inferior. Now superior oblique do not arise from the tendinous ring. It arises from the directly from the bone of the orbit run forwards just below and parallel to the roof, roof of the orbit. Superior oblique. Just to differentiate from other muscles, I have used blue marker. Now this muscle again converts into a tendon. Then here attached to the roof of the orbit, there is a fibrous pulley. Trochlea or pulley. The tendon of obliquus superior or superior oblique it passes through this pulley and then turn downwards and backwards 
to be inserted to the sclera of the eye bone. This uh, trochlea act like a pulley through which the tendon of superior oblique muscle passes. The tendon, the muscle and tendon first run forwards below and parallel to the roof of the orbit. The tendon passes through the pulley and turn downwards and backwards and inserted to the sclera. This pulley is called trochlea. And this is superior oblique muscle. Then the other one is inferior oblique muscle. It arises is from the floor of the orbit. Originate from the floor of the orbit. near the orbital opening, run backwards and upwards, and inserted to the sclera of the eyeball. This is inferior oblique muscle. Inferior oblique muscle of the orbit. Now you can see that uh, the inferior oblique muscle is equal to this part of the tendon of superior oblique after passing through the fibrous pulley or trochlea. Then uh, soft part, you know the upper eyelid And this is a lower eyelid. There is a tarsal plate in the upper eyelid. Superior tarsus, which provide rigidity to the upper and lower eyelids. And muscles are also attached to the superior tarsal plate. Now, apart from orbiculus oculi muscle, in the upper eyelid is the levator palpebri superioris muscle. Levator palpebri superioris muscle. This, mus this is muscle of upper eyelid and elevate the superior eyelid, upper eyelid, so named as Levator palpebri superioris. Levator palpebri superioris. The 
these are extrinsic extrinsic muscles of the eyeball and a muscle in the upper eyelid levator palpebris superioris muscle then you know here there is a ciliary body it is a ring shape so in section it is cut twice ciliary body and from it uh, iris arise and to it also the lens is suspended to the ciliary body lens is suspended by suspensory ligament now in the ciliary body is the ciliaris muscle then in the iris arrhythmal muscles and i told you that the arrhythmal muscle comprise of sphincter pupillae and dilator pupillae muscle suppose this is front view of the iris and this is pupil pupil is eccentrically located in the iris not centrally this is pupil or opening now this is rs it comprise of sphincter pupillary muscle and dilateral pupillary muscle the sphincter pupillary muscle circularly arranged these are sphincter pupillary muscle sphincter pupillary are constrictor pupillary muscle of the iris when the ring shape is sphincter muscle fiber contract it cause constriction of the pupil this why it's called constrictor pupillary muscle or sphincter pupillary muscle this is pupillary margin of the iris and this is the ciliary body because here peripherally the iris is attached to the ciliary body and dilator pupillary muscle the dilator pupillary muscle run radially like this dilator pupillary muscle of the iris dilator pupillary readily arrange when they contract the pupil become dilated <coughs> So these were extraocular muscle the intraocular muscles of the eyeball and levator papillary muscle of the mm, upper eyelid now i will draw a functional diagram to understand the actions of these muscles extraocular muscles and the eyeball now this is a functional or physiological diagram Sh showing what showing functions of ocular muscles now suppose
This is the middle line. That is the nasal region between two eyeballs. Now this is a suppose a right eyeball. right eyeball and this is left eyeball. Right and left eyeball. Now, what are the actions of these uh, extraocular muscles on the eyeball? Actions of the oblique muscle, oblique superior and inferior on the eyeball. Now, above is the superior rectus, below is the inferior rectus. Medial rectus on the middle side, lateral rectus on the lateral side. So, medial rectus move the eyeball medially. Medial recti of right and left eyeball. Medial rectus, right eye, medial rectus, left eye. Move the eyeball towards the nose, inwards, or adduct the eyeball. On the lateral side, lateral rectus. Rectus externus. Move the eyeball laterally or outwards. Lateral rectus or rectus externus. 
Modi eyeball, literally, both right and left eyes. Now, superior rectus. Move the eyeball upwards. And inwards. The arrows indicate the action superior rectus move the eyeball upwards and inwards inwards and upwards inferior rectus Move the eyeball downwards and inwards. Inferior rectus. Move the eyeball downward and inward. So you can see their superior rectus. Move the eyeball upwards. Inferior rectus, move the eyeball downward. Opposite actions. But these two actions are similar. Both superior rectus and inferior rectus, they move the eyeball inward. Apart from upward and downward movement. Next, inferior oblique, obliquus inferior, this is not superior oblique. Inferior oblique. Move the inferior oblique muscle, move the eyeball upwards and outwards. Outwards. And upwards. Superior oblique, move the eyeball downwards. And outwards. This is superior oblique, not inferior. Move the eyeballs outwards and uh, upwards, uh, downwards. So the inferior oblique move the eyeball upwards, superior oblique move the eyeball downwards. Opposite action, but inferior oblique, apart from moving the eyeball upwards, it also moves the, uh, apart from moving the eyeball upwards, it also moves the eyeball outwards. While the superior oblique, apart from moving the eyeball downward, also move it outwards. 
So outward movements are same, but these are opposite movements, inferior oblique upwards, superior oblique downwards. Same is in this eye. Inferior oblique, superior oblique, superior rectus, inferior rectus, and medial rectus. Now, why it is a physiological or functional diagram, not anatomical? You know, the superior oblique is located above the eyeball. But in the functional diagram, it is labeled below the eyeball. Similarly, the inferior oblique, anatomically, it is below the eyeball. But functionally, I have shown the inferior oblique upward. Why? Because the inferior oblique moves the eyeball upwards, while the superior oblique moves the eyeball downwards. This is why I have written superior, uh, inferior oblique upper, uh, above the eye, level of eyeball, because it moves the eyeball upwards. And in superior oblique, uh, I have shown below the eyeball because it moves the eyeball downward. Otherwise, grass anatomically, above the eyeball is superior oblique, below the eyeball is inferior oblique. But because it is a functional or physiological diagram, so uh, I, have, I have drawn according to the uh, actions of superior and inferior oblique on the eyeball. In the inferior oblique move the eyeball upward, so I have uh, labeled it above the level of eyeball. And if superior oblique move the eyeball downward, this is why it is shown below the eyeball. Uh, this uh, um, action of the superior oblique, why it move the eyeball downward, can be explained by this diagram. You know, when the superior oblique muscle contract, the pull will be in this direction, and this part of the tendon will pull in this direction. because it is oblique. So when this part of the tendon move in this direction, it roll the eyeball downward. So superior oblique muscle move the eyeball downward. Now I told you this is inferior oblique and the inferior oblique is equal to this part of the tendon of superior oblique. When it contract, it roll the eyeball upward. When it contract, it roll the eyeball upward. And this downward. The oblique part of the tendon of superior oblique, the pull is forwards and upwards, therefore it will turn the eyeball downward. So superior oblique move the eyeball downward, not superior. And the inferior oblique muscle, which is equal to this part of the tendon of superior oblique, when it contracts, it roll the eyeball upward. So inferior oblique do not move the eyeball inferiorly, it turn the eyeball upwards. So these were the uh, actions of the eyeball, extraocular muscles. And uh, you know the muscles of intraocular muscle, the ciliaris muscle, the constrictor pupil, dilator pupil muscle, constrictor pupil muscle constrict the uh, pupil while dilator pupil dilate. The dilator pupil is innervated by parasympathetic, uh, the dilator pupil is innervated by the sympathetic nervous system and the constrictor pupil by the parasympathetic. Similarly, ciliaris muscle in the ciliary body, when it contracts, it exerts, uh, it loses the um, capsule of the lens, lens curvature is increased, lens power is increased, and vice versa. So, these were the muscles related to the eyeball, extrinsic muscle, intrinsic muscle, and a special muscle of the upper eyelid, elevator, papillary superioris muscle, and at the same time, ciliaris muscle and aradial muscle, intrinsic muscle. Now, what is nerve supply of these muscles? All the extraocular muscles,
all the extra acrylic muscles of the eyeball are innervated by aculo motor all the extra ocular muscles of the eyeball are innervated by oculomotor nerve except except what except so so it means bitter taste uh, you, you, you you say bitter sore throat a term sore bitter taste irritating taste sore so all the extra ocular muscles of the eyeball they are innervated by oculomotor nerve except two muscle except sore what is by this meant by this sore means superior oblique s o stand for superior oblique muscle superior oblique or obliquus superior muscle and r e stand for rectus externus muscle rectus externus also known as lateral rectus this is a mnemonic which will help you to remember the innervation of the extra ocular muscle all the extra ocular muscles of the eyeball innervated by the third cranial oculomotor nerve except superior oblique and rectus externus no to remember this we use this mnemonic sor s o r e s o stand for superior oblique r e for rectus externus or lateral rectus now what is the nerve supply of these uh, two muscles not oculomotor nerve superior oblique by trochlear nerve and the lateral rectus rectus externus by abducens nerve so all the extra ocular muscles are innervated by the oculomotor nerve except superior oblique which is innervated by the trochlear nerve the fourth uh, cranial nerve and the uh, rectus externus or lateral rectus supplied by abducens nerve now how you remember that superior oblique is innervated by trochlear nerve how you remember that the rectus externus is uh, is uh, innervated by the abducens nerve the superior oblique is innervated by trochlear nerve why because its tendon passes through trochlea through this pulley so easy to remember the muscle which pass, the tendon of which passes through the trochlea is innervated by trochlear nerve why uh, which muscle superior oblique trochlear nerve now the lateral rectus supplied by abducens nerve how you remember when the lateral rectus contract it move the eyeball outwards that is abduction lateral rectus abduct the eyeball move the eyeball outwards so because as far as the action is concerned the lateral rectus muscle abduct the eyeball this is why the nerve which supply the lateral rectus is called abducens nerve this will help you to remember the innervation of the 
extra ocular muscles of the eyeball. Next, uh, what is the nerve supply of the levator palpebrae superioris muscles? What is nerve supply of the levator palpebrae superioris muscle of the eyelid? I told you this muscle comprises of a smooth part and skeletal part. Skeletal part and the other is smooth or involuntary part of the levator palpebrae superioris muscle. The skeletal part, voluntary part of the um, upper eyelid, uh, uh, levator papillary superioris, it is innervated by oculomotor nerve, motor fibers of the oculomotor nerve. Motor fibers of oculo, oculomotor nerve. While the smooth part, of the levator papillary superioris muscle, it is generated by sympathetic nerve fibers. Smooth part by sympathetic nerves. These sympathetic nerves reaches the upper eyelid via oculomotor nerve and the rest of the skeletal part of the levator papillary superioris is innervated by the um, uh, motor fibers of the oculomotor nerve. Next, I told you intrinsic muscle, aradal muscle. I told you it divides into constrictor pupillary muscle. And dilator. Pupillary muscle of the iris. The constrictor pupillary muscle is uh, innervated by parasympathetic para sympathetic. nerve fibers of oculomotor nerve. You know oculomotor nerve, it is a motor nerve and also parasympathetic. So the parasympathetic fibers, that is a danger westphal fibers of the oculomotor nerve, they uh, innervate the constrictor pupillary muscle of the iris while the dilator pupillary muscles are innervated by the sympathetic nerve fiber. By sympathetic nerve fibers. The autonomic nerve fibers, sympathetic, parasympathetic, they reach the eyeball. To supply the intrinsic muscles of the eyeball, 
and to supply the smooth muscle part of the levator palpebris superioris muscle. So I will draw a section through the norma frontalis and norma basalis of the skull. This is a section through the norma basalis of the skull. And I found few foramina. Few foramina in the norma basalis of the skull pertaining to the nerve supply. Course of nerve sympathetic, parasympathetic, supplying the intrinsic muscle of the eyeball. Now this is foramen magnum, a mustide process. Norma frontalis in the region of orbit. This is the roof of the orbit. Here is optic canal. Floor of the orbit. Maxilla. Now here is cranial cavity. Which is occupied by brain. Norma basalis and frontalis of the skull. Now what is this? Carotid canal. This is foramen magnum. This is foramen lacerum. You can see here in the Norma basalis, this is a carotid canal which runs upwards and then forwards. 
and then open into the foramen lacerum instead of directly open into the cranial cavity. And this is foramen lacerum, and this is opening in a foramen lacerum which open into the cranial cavity. Now here is vertebral canal through which spinal cord passes downwards. Now parallel to the vertebral column on each side there is a sympathetic trunk. I will show the sympathetic trunk of one side. This is sympathetic trunk. Ascending and descending fibers of the sympathetic trunk or sympathetic chain. And in the cervical region it is superior sympathetic cervical ganglion. Then middle then inferior. This is superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. This is cervical part of the sympathetic chain. Now, here there is cavernous sinus. Inside the cranial cavity, one of the major sinuses, cavernous sinus, one on each side. Cavernous sinus. This is orbital cavity, and in the orbit is the eyeball. Here is the upper eyelid. In the upper eyelid is the Levator palpebris superioris muscle. Levator palpebris superioris muscle in the upper eyelid. lower eyelid. Ciliary body. Occupied by ciliaris muscle. Iris. 
with the pupil in the center lens suspended to the ciliary body. Now here is the midbrain pons middle obligator midbrain traversed by the cerebral aqueduct surrounded by central gray matter and in the central gray matter is the upper part is the acclomotor nerve nucleus below is the trochlear nerve nucleus and the upper part of the and in the upper part you can see this is the danger westphal nucleus motor nerve nucleus and your west fall now you know a kilometer that it uh, arises on the kilometer nerve nucleus traverses the cranial cavity enter the cavernous sinus and before entering the orbit it divides into upper and lower roots and these two roots enter the orbit where they divide into branches to supply most of the extra ocular muscles of the eye bone motor nerve the adenger westphal parasympathetic nerve fibers arising from the adenger westphal nucleus of acromotor nerve run through the acromotor nerve along with motor fibers follow the lower root of the acromotor nerve enter the orbit along with lower root of acromotor nerve leave the lower root where its fibers relay into the ciliary ganglion the preganglionic fibers relay in the ciliary ganglion and from the ciliary ganglion post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers arise run through the uh, uh, through the short ciliary branches of the acromotor nerve enter the orbit these are parasympathetic adenger westphal uh, fibers which uh, enter the eye ball to supply the intrinsic muscles ciliaris muscle and the constrictor pupillary muscle parasympathetic fibers these are para sympathetic nerve fibers of acromotor nerve parasympathetic fibers of the acromotor nerve run through the acromotor nerve so because these parasympathetic fibers are run through the acromotor nerve arise from the acromotor nerve nucleus so parasympathetic nerve is a, the acromotor nerve is a parasympathetic nerve next i told you that the some of the muscles are innervated by the sympathetic nerves also that is the dilator pupillary muscle and the smooth part of the 
liver palpebral superior muscle now through the cavernous sinus apart from apart from oculomotor nerve ophthalmic nerve also passes ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve this is suppose ophthalmic nerve traversing through the cavernous sinus so oculomotor nerve and ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve run through the cavernous sinus now from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion sympathetic nerve fibers arise now here through the carotid canal internal carotid artery enter the cray cavity first it run upwards through the carotid canal then forwards enter the upper part the foramen lacerum then ascend through the foramen lacerum and passes through the uh, cavernous sinus so in turn part of the internal carotid artery also traverses through the cavernous sinus this is internal carotid artery now i told you that the post ganglionic sympathetic fibers arise from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion and these sympathetic fibers reaches the cavernous sinus to form a cavernous plexus how they reach they reach via internal carotid artery along the course of internal carotid artery these sympathetic fibers they reach the cavernous sinus where they form cavernous sympathetic plexus cavernous sympathetic plexus of nerves in the cavernous sinus now i told you that the uh, dilator pupillary muscle of the iris is innervated by sympathetic nerves now how sympathetic nerves reach here in the iris to supply the dilator pupillae the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve it traverses the cavernous sinus and pick some sympathetic fibers from the sympathetic fibers from the cavernous plexus and along with the course of ophthalmic nerve these sympathetic nerve fibers they enter the iris these enter the iris to supply the dilator pupillary muscle these are sympathetic nerve fibers from cavernous plexus in the cavernous sinus so the post ganglionic sympathetic fibers originate from superior cervical sympathetic ganglia these sympathetic fibers follow the course of internal carotid artery through carotid canal upper half of the foramen lacerum into the clave cavity and the intra cavity run through the cavernous sinus so here uh, in this way the sympathetic fibers they reach the cavernous sinus where they form a plexus and this plexus from this plexus sympathetic fibers arise which enter the orbit which enter the orbit uh, which enter the orbit and enter the eyeball reach the iris to innervate the mm, dilator pupillary muscle of the iris 
Next, I told you there is smooth part of the elevator, palpably superior. It is also innervated by sympathetic fibers. Now, how the sympathetic fibers reaches the upper eyelid to supply the smooth part of the elevator, palpably superior muscle. Again, you know the from this cavernous plexus. Again, the sympathetic fibers they follow the upper root from the cavernous sinus sympathetic plexus. The sympathetic fibers they are carried by the superior root of the oculomotor nerve and via its branches these sympathetic fibers reaches the upper eyelid along with the branches of the oculomotor nerve along with the branches of the oculomotor nerve and to supply the smooth muscle part of the levator palpebri superioris muscle So these uh, green lines with uh, black dots are the sympathetic fibers to differentiate from other fibers. In this way the sympathetic fibers reaches the upper eyelid and innervate the smooth muscle part of the elevator palpebri superior muscle. Now look here, the oculomotor nerve, apart from motor fibers, also comprise of parasympathetic fibers which originate from a nucleus of the oculomotor nerve known as the Edinger Vespa nucleus. Therefore, the parasympathetic fibers are part of oculomotor nerve. This is why oculomotor nerve is a parasympathetic motor and parasympathetic nerve. Now here you can see the sympathetic nerve fibers, they follow the course of ophthalmic nerve. But the ophthalmic nerve is a purely sensory nerve. It is not sympathetic. These uh, sympathetic fibers, they follow the course of ophthalmic nerve. They, uh, the sympathetic fibers, they uh, use the ophthalmic nerve as a means of transportation to reach its destination. That is the Iris. Therefore, this ophthalmic division of trigeminal, it is not a sympathetic nerve because the sympathetic fibers do not belong to the ophthalmic nerve. These sympathetic fibers just follow the course of ophthalmic nerve to reach its destination, that is the um, aradal muscle, that is the dilator pupillary muscle of the iris. Clear? Second, I told you again the sympathetic fibers, they follow the uh, course of upper root of the oculomotor nerve, its branches, and reach the levator papyrus superiors. So these uh, sympathetic fibers which follow the upper root and branches of oculomotor nerve are not part of the oculomotor nerve. This is why oculomotor nerve is not a sympathetic nerve. These sympathetic fibers use the uh, oculomotor nerve as a mean of transportation to reach its destination. Sympathetic fibers along the oculomotor nerve and its branches reaches the nerves. This is why the oculomotor nerve is not a sympathetic nerve. So neither ophthalmic nerve is sympathetic nerve nor the oculomotor nerve is sympathetic nerve because these sympathetic fibers, nerve fibers do not belong to the ophthalmic nerve, do not belong to the oculomotor nerve. They just uh, follow the course of these nerves, oculomotor nerve and ophthalmic nerve to reach iris and to reach smooth part of the elevator part of the superior muscle. However, the parasympathetic fibers of the oculomotor nerve are part and parcel of the oculomotor nerve. This is why oculomotor nerve is not only motor nerve but it is parasympathetic also. Why? Because it parasympathetic fibers originate from the endangered westphal nucleus of oculomotor nerve and reaches its uh, distribution of the ciliary body and the pupillary muscle as well. So this was a brief about the uh, origin, course and termination and supply of motor fibers of the oculomotor now, the parasympathetic nerve fibers of the oculomotor now, they supply which part and the sympathetic fibers which originate from superior cervical sympathetic ganglion 
reaches the cavernous sinus where it forms cornus plexus and these synthetic fibers are picked by ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve and glomerular nerve to supply the um, uh, constrictor pupillary muscle of the iris and to supply the smooth muscle part of the levator papillary superior muscle so this prior prior knowledge about the muscles uh, of the eyeball extrinsic intrinsic muscle of the um, upper eyelid that is levator papillary superior muscle sympathetic innervation parasympathetic innervation motor innervation all are explained by its origin course etc so i hope this will help you uh, to understand the effects of lesions of uh, midbrain especially pertaining to the oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerve so thank you very much in the next lecture we will discuss various syndromes uh, resulting from lesions of the midbrain thank you